So this is all of the tools minus the stuff I need to charge the laps. So my burnisher and, and the diamond powder. And actually, I didn't use this one. This one is used for smaller stuff. Um, but these were the three blades that I used the most. Um, this one on the power scraper, this one manually, and this one to hook scrape manually. Um, you know, I'll no I, I will note that I can do a lot more with the dull blade manually than I can with the power scraper. The po once, once the blade... Power scraper works really nicely with a sharp blade. Um, but you, keeping that keen edge is nearly impossible. And after that, doing it by hand allows me to put enough downforce in. Just getting going, scraping this last side here. I've got over 10 thousandths to take off of the one side, so it's a lot of material. I'm using a combination of scraping and a soft lap, 100 grit diamond pad to uh, just bulk take down the material. It doesn't keep it flat, but it does take material away. Coming up here, you're going to see that the the bluing doesn't really agree with my numbers. All those X's are measurements and where the high spots are. So things are getting a little bit tilty and moving all over the place during this process. you got to be patient. Continue to take measurements. Continue to trust your measurements or continue to check your measurements so you have trust in your measurements and keep going from there. Um, continue. You can see the smooth surface. That's indicative of the, of the lapping versus scraping. Here we've gotten back into scraping. Still not a lot of contact area, but it's starting to come in. And for the most part, this process works pretty much the same as it did with steel. I do end up using a lap after a scrape pass really lightly just to flatten things out a little bit, um, especially early on. Well, not especially, all the time really. So here things are really starting to spread, come in. You can see a bunch of, of measurements along the one side where I'm doing all this with the bluing and I'm also running it against the dial to make sure that um, it's parallel and to the other face that I had done. Okay, so we're working on scraping here and trying to get rid of this big hole that's in the middle of this thing. Um, it's going to take a few more rounds to get rid of that. I'm mostly bump scraping this just manually with a scraper. Um, I didn't. I don't think I sharpened my tool during this whole side, um, whereas with the power scraper I would have done it after every pass, pretty much. Um, most of that gap has been worked out here, also passing over it with a lap to flatten it out. Here's the first round of hook scraping. My intent here was to create a texture that would ultimately be seen when it was done. Unfortunately, I didn't get the geometry quite right initially, and I ended up lapping out pretty much all of that, and the side ended up being perfectly smooth. I am considering going back and, and doing like a half moon flaking on there. Um, I'm not real confident. In, <laughs> I don't want to screw it up at this point, so I think we'll probably leave it alone. So this thing's starting to come into shape right now. I'm pretty much done with the hook scraping. Uh, or I think this is the last round of it. And now we go ahead and start lapping the thing out. And you can see when the lapping starts, things get a little goofy. Um, I get a little panicky actually when, when I start seeing these. Um, you got to remember that those low spots are really close behind. So it's not quite like scraping where these patterns would look really shitty as scraping patterns, but as, um, as lapped patterns, they're pretty good. And I found that the granite really didn't smear, um, which was really surprising. Even with these are relatively thick coats, I did thinner coats towards the end. Um, but I didn't see a lot of smearing with it at all. And that's just about coming into, into fruition right about there. And that's where we finished it up. A little bit of movement there. See, I think it just dropped down. Because now I don't have it there. So that's the biggest movement I have there. That's definitely less than a ten thousandth. Okay, so that's that proves this side against that side. This now, but once it that dropped, and that really screwed me up a lot. 
early on. So a tiny bit of movement there, maybe a half a thou, or a, uh, not a half a thou, a half a ten thou. Not bad. So I've been adding this weight to it on the top for a couple of reasons. A, this tends to rotate. I, I don't like touching it. I like having my hands off the table and only touching this. And that keeps it from doing that. Also, um, it's not really relevant now, but as I was doing it, um, especially when I was working, if I was working on like the bottom face, um, which after I had done these two sides, I was, and it was kind of irregular, I'd move this around and see if my readings changed at all. And they did when they was when I wasn't flat. Once I got flat, it really doesn't seem to affect it. So, which is which is good. So, so we'll go through and that's coming in at negative eleven. Right on negative 11. These signs. Hmm. That one's about 10,000, about two ten thousands high. That side's dead on. Okay, now we'll um, we'll flip it. This is not the reference size. I, I've not done these measurements ever, actually. Those two sides are still good. Or that side is. And so is that side. Mm. Yeah. So even when I'm doing the sides, I'm still setting the using this face as my master each time. Negative one four or so is where that's coming in. Now three tenths short there. Two three. Four two, and we're one two tenths out, something like that. spot there no well, that was the table I just measured that spot three times twice with this
three or so. I think it's good enough for my uses.